What's going on people, Two here, and this is the three-step process I use to create bodies for anime slash game characters slash VTuber models. This is part of a full video series of creating a model from scratch in Blender all the way to Unity. So the three steps are one, the blocking out in edit mode, two, sculpting details in sculpt mode, and three, retopology in edit mode, so that it's suitable for export. This is a process used by some professional Blender modelers and I like it because you have good control over the detail and the amount of poly, plus the final result is pretty clean. For this I'm using Blender 3.3 and it doesn't matter if you're using Goo Engine or regular Blender. So let's get started with step one which is the block out phase in edit mode. So here I'm just going to take the default cube and edit it into the basic shapes of the body, the most basic shapes. So the upper torso is this small trapezoid, another trapezoid for the bottom of the torso. So here I'm just using the basic editing tools, Control R for loop cut, E for extrude, and of course G to grab things around and S to scale things down wherever needed. Here I made some vertical loop cuts so I can extrude out the neck area. Here's the end goal of this block out. So if you can get these general shapes, it doesn't matter how you get there. So feel free to use this as a reference. And of course, for the front part, we do mirror it down the middle with a mirror modifier. So let's create a loop cut down the middle, delete everything on the right side, and add a mirror modifier to our mesh. I have some additional loop cuts near the middle so that I can extrude the legs while leaving a gap between the legs. And we simply scale it down at the end and it gives us already the general silhouette of what legs look like. After a few tweaks, we move on to the arm. As you can see, the top part of the torso is loop cut in half, allowing us to easily extrude the arms out, make another loop around the middle of the arm, and make that a little bigger, because anatomically, the middle of the arm, like where near your elbow is, is one of the wider parts of the arm. Move points around as needed to get your desired proportions. And here we split the leg into the thigh and the calf. We extrude a bit on the top part of the calf. And for the side, just note the curves on the torso, on the buttocks area and on the calf. Once you're satisfied, add a subdivision surface modifier. You don't have to change the settings, but let's select the ends of the arms and the legs, press shift E, and then drag our cursor all the way to the right. This makes it so that those parts are not affected by the subdivision surface because we need those as openings for the hands and the feet. Let's flesh out the neck and do it for the neck as well. So here I create a loop cut and I shrink these uh, top parts of the neck down so it looks more like a neck. Then I take the end of the neck, do the shift E and drag to the right thing so that it's also unaffected by subdiv. One other area I'll do it for is the middle of the arm, but I won't drag it all the way to the right, maybe just a little. And we'll continue to tweak and here I'll tweak just the hip area and also make it thinner around the knees. Keep in mind, this is a process that you can make tweaks at any time. Now I go to object mode, add a new sphere object, add a mirror modifier to it, and these are gonna be the melons, of course. Let's just do a quick sculpt to make sure it, um, it's not just like balls sticking out of the chest. Again, this is still just a block out, so just the general shape will do. Adjust it to your liking. I'm gonna move them a little lower here. And now we're just about ready for step two, where we refine the details in sculpt mode. Right now, let's apply every single modifier on our objects and join them together as one object. So make sure your body and your melons are now one mesh. And as our mesh is selected, we enter sculpt mode and head over here near the top right, remesh menu. You don't need to adjust any settings, just click remesh. And this prepares our entire mesh for sculpting by giving it a bunch of vertices and fusing the tip and fusing the whole mesh together so that it's one mesh and there's no inside vertices. Now right beside remesh menu, make sure the die and topo checkbox is checked. Set detailing to constant detail and set the value to 40. Let's also make sure mirroring is on. Now there are lots of tools in sculpt mode, but don't be intimidated, we only need three. The first one will be clay. With clay on a low strength like 0.15, I just go over the parts that I'm going to add detail to. This will ensure those areas have ample vertices to be edited. The second tool is draw, which is a very first in the toolbar. Draw is self-explanatory. You can add onto the mesh, but what I'm doing here is holding control so it does the opposite, which is it carves out from the mesh. We use this to carve out certain details in the body, which I'll give you a checklist later. But as you can see, after we carve things out, it looks bad and jagged. So that brings us to our third tool, the smooth tool. And that's also pretty self-explanatory. We smooth out those details we've made as well as any rough edges on our body. Actually, there's a fourth one that's also sometimes helpful, which is the grab tool. And you can just freely push in or pull out any parts that need a little tweaking. So after you've remeshed, this is what you have to do in order. First, you take your clay tool on a low strength and go over the entire mesh. Second, we use the smooth tool to smooth out all the rough edges, including the arms, legs, and torso. 
And third is when we add our finishing touches, the details. Here's a list of details that I like to include, but you can use as much of these as you want or more or less. Using the draw tool, but with control held so that it hollows out instead, I hollow out the collarbone, the belly button, the rib cage, the middle of the back, but the back of the knee, and I also created a bit of separation between the breasts and the torso. As we mentioned, use Smooth Tool after you've hollowed those parts out. Now using either the regular draw tool or grab to grab things out, I define the knees and the elbows, the shoulder blades, and the abs. Now once you've added all the details you want and refined it to your liking, you can move on. Note that it doesn't have to be perfect and not everything has to be 100% smooth because it won't matter once we re apologize everything anyway. It's not going to catch those small imperfections. And if you feel your arm or leg proportions are off, that's okay. It'll be much easier to fix in the next step, which we'll move on to now. Step 3, re apology so first thing I'll do in this step, add a new plane object. And for this object, find the viewport display option and check in front. Apply mirror modifier to it. Actually, I'll just need one vertex for now. Now I'm going to turn on snapping. Under the snapping drop down, face nearest. Again, this is Blender 3.3. So I'm going to do the outline of the breast first, just using E to extrude around the outline of the breast. After I complete the outline and merge it, I extrude it and scale it down and it will snap to the shape of the breast. As I'm doing this, I'm just uh, making sure the vertices are properly aligned and that they have ample space between each face. Object mode, I turn on shade smooth, and from here I work outwards. Now I'm quite flexible with this, there's no real order in how I do it, but I'll try my best to share my mindset while doing this while keeping the video not too long. Mainly I'm just extruding groups of faces so that it's more efficient, filling in faces with F, and creating loop cuts where necessary with Control R. I tweak the merge distance on my mirror modifier so that my mesh joins properly down the middle. Here I use the knife tool because I need a little more vertices in that area to get that collarbone detail. And one goal I have when I'm doing this to keep everything clean is to make sure everything is a quad, meaning everything has four edges and four vertices, with as few exceptions to that rule as possible. I will now add my hand to the scene which I created in the video right before this if you want to see how I made it. But my hand's opening has 12 vertices, which is pre-planned. So I'll take one vertex, shift D it over to the opening of the arm, and E to extrude out a loop that is also 12 vertices at the opening of the arm. I'll make sure all of those vertices are evenly spread out just like they are in the hand. I'll now select all of those vertices and start extruding them towards the arm. When doing this, we have to make sure that the vertices are always evenly spanned out. As you can see, as I use Control R to create loop cuts, those cuts will wrap around our sculpted mesh as long as snapping is on, which is extremely convenient. Here I'm going to use a bevel tool to create extra vertices for the elbow. And everything I've marked in green is just an annotation for myself that once everything is done, I'm going to find those areas even more in edit mode. So as you can see, areas with extra details such as the ribcage, I add more geometry there to make sure that shape is captured in the retopology. Here for the belly button as well, I use a knife tool to create extra quads around the belly button area. Same with the collarbone, there's an extra thin layer of faces there that ensure that the shape of the collarbone from the sculpture is captured. I decided to just not do the abs for now. Didn't really feel like it. So now we got front torso, arms done, um, stomach done. Now we move on to the legs, which is similar to the arms. My feet's opening have 10 vertices, so I'm gonna make sure that this opening has 10 as well. As I extrude it upwards, it's not gonna come out evenly, so I have to ensure that it's even by manually moving the points around. And once again, this is pretty easy. We just extrude it upwards and create loop cuts to make sure the entire leg is fully fleshed out. As it approaches the upper body, I angle the loop slightly to follow the curve of the body. Now I'm gonna add my foot to the scene. I actually don't have my foot tutorial out yet. The hand tutorial didn't do so good, so I'm not sure if people actually want that, but. I'll probably have to upload it regardless so that it's just complete. I won't bridge the hands and the feet just yet. Now comes one of the harder parts where we'll have to harmoniously join the legs with the stomach, with the butt, etc. Just added some geometry here for the knee later. Now joining these areas together is just like a puzzle. It's something you mainly have to figure out on your own. I can only give you the general guidelines like make sure everything is quads, make sure everything is spaced out properly, and make sure it follows the contour of the body. And the beauty of the snapping tool is you don't have to worry as much about the micro placements, you just have to worry about how you're going to join everything together. Which is why I prefer this method over just using edit mode from scratch and creating a body like that. Now we work on the butt region and again we have to create extra vertices here to capture 
that little crease in between the buttocks and the legs. Often there will be times where you'll have these shapes that are not squares, but they're still quads to help out with joining certain areas of the mesh with other areas of the mesh. And you'll see a couple of those around uh, the butt area and also the side of the stomach because of the rib cage area. And for the most part, that's really just fine. Um, it doesn't affect anything in a big way. For the most part, all of the hard parts are finished now. We just have to worry about the rest of the side, which we're extruding out here. Not too hard to harmonize that with the opening of the arm. I dissolved some edges here on the torso just to make it a little neater. I finished up this area that joins the side of the leg with the butt. The middle and top of the butt are relatively easy. We just have to extrude the vertices up. The main area that we're left with is the whole back, which is relatively simple. And this collarbone and neck area. I'm gonna make sure that the neck has 10 vertices. That'll match the opening of my head, which I'll do in the next video. I'll have to do this weird triangle quad here, but that's okay. I got a little confused on what to do here, but if it ever gets a little messy like that, you can just delete the vertices and try again with a different method. So here's the solution that I found to harmonizing this area. And then this part is pretty clever, not gonna lie. I'm just gonna extrude this point out, control R to loop cut, mouse wheel scroll up to create more loops, and then use F to create faces to this area from the top of the neck, then loop cut those to quickly establish those parts. And you'll see me use this a lot more for the rest of the back. Here's another small mini game puzzle. This is what I decided to go with even though the faces are kind of big, but overall it's okay because this is not really a detailed area. We can just span those out a little more. Now I can take this whole segment, extrude it down, and once we align it and then loop cut it, it will follow, it will snap onto our mesh. And here we have a perfect one face gap, so if we select two vertices and keep pressing F, it will just fill these in. So. I've been doing that a lot. If you didn't know how to do that, that's it's, it's really that simple. The bottom back, top of butt area is also pretty simple. We can do the same thing where we make these really long faces and then just loop cut them after and it will align with the shape of that area. Just gotta make sure it's aligned to the middle so it joins, emerges. And we're almost finished. We just have this one last puzzle that we have to get through. This one looks pretty simple. It's just one row off from being completely aligned, but we can solve that pretty easily by creating a loop cut on the side closer to the middle of the back so that we can easily join it like that. So in real time, this takes about an hour. And now I'm just gonna go over all of the vertices with a final pass to make sure everything's aligned and neat. Now we can just put away our hider sculpture. We can turn off snapping so that I can now freely move around some parts that I wanted more definition on, such as the knees, the collarbone. I'll move that in a little bit more and also use Shift E to add a crease there. And as I mentioned earlier, this is now the convenient time to uh, adjust the length of your limbs because it's really simple um, topology now. So you can just scale it down as needed. And here I just join my hand, feet, and body objects all as one and use bridge edge loops, which is in the edge menu. Just select both opening loops. I don't know why I had a little uh, trouble here, but these have the same amount of vertices. So once they bridge, it will be a perfect match. You can even dissolve the edges here if we don't need those extra um, faces. Clean it up a bit. And I'm just gonna scale down the arms just a little smaller and shorter. It's common that once I connect the hands, the feet, the head, that the proportion becomes more clear to me. If this video helped you, please help me out by liking the video and consider subscribing because up next we'll continue to work on this model and I'll show you my process of creating this entire anime styled head complete with edited normals and shading. Anyways, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.